Oh, XKCD. I love your science jokes I don't understand at all. Ah, what the hell? House on fire? Oh, it's the Todd alarm. Let's set that off. Oh, Taylor Swift finally dropped her next single. Eh, it's not that important. I'll get to it in four months like I always do. It can wait. Eh, what the hell, I can take a listen at least. Not worth taking my hoodie off, though. I don't this can't wait. Okay, Taylor Swift wants us to look what we made her do. The world moves on another day, another drama, drama. She wants us to know that it's our fault that she's doing this. I think she wants us to be sorry. And I am. I feel very, very bad I made her do this. And now that we've adequately assigned blame for who made her do what she's doing, what the hell is she doing? Yeah, I kind of had to drop everything to cover this. Honestly, I think I already took too much time getting to it. It's it's already been picked pretty clean. Like, people notice within seconds that it uses the melody from I'm Too Sexy of all things. Quite honestly, that's the least interesting thing about this song to me. I wish it had sampled more of I'm Too Sexy. That song's fun. I don't your kingdom cake. If we're gonna understand what led us to this nuclear meltdown, we have to understand all the bad decisions that led us here. So let us go back eight years to the night Kanye West made that bitch famous. Why I made that bitch famous. Taylor Swift was already famous, of course, but there's a kind of truth to Kanye's claim regardless. Taylor Swift, the songwriter, was famous. Taylor Swift, the public personality, was born that night. Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time! The image of the poor little teenage girl whose moment of happiness was stolen from her by one unstable blithering idiot was burned into our collective consciousness so deeply that two presidents felt the need to comment on it. Now both Taylor and Kanye would go on to remain hugely successful and they even made up for a brief period, but while Kanye's image would never really lose the stain of that incident, Taylor's image of straightforward innocence and honesty began slowly curdling with breakup after breakup, feud after feud, bitchy song after bitchy song, and a sudden departure from country music towards bright, flashy pop music, a lot of it pretty bad. But then Kanye did this. Me and Taylor might still have sex, why I made that bitch famous. God now even for stupid loudmouth Kanye, this was over the line for many people. There was outrage. And Taylor was quick to confirm that she too was outraged by it and had denied Kanye when asked for her approval. And later that week, she burned him publicly at the Grammys. There are going to be people along the way who will try to take credit for your fame. You will know that it was you and the people who love you who put you there. And for a brief second, everything was back to the way it was. Taylor, the wronged innocent, Kanye, the brain jackass. It must have felt like old times for Taylor. But then... I don't want to do rap that makes people feel bad. Um, yeah, I mean, what you don't want to have a line better. It's obviously very tongue-in-cheek either way. Kanye's wife Kim Kardashian dropped this little bomb of Taylor actually approving Kanye's lyrics a short time later. Taylor tried to explain her version of events, but the damage was done. Taylor Swift's image as innocent victim was as destroyed as Joe Paterno, saintly father figure, and Bill Cosby, moral voice of black America. Now, do you care about any of that? I personally do not. I don't read goddamn TMZ. I don't even want to know about this. I don't goddamn care. But Taylor Swift does, which is why I had to say all of that. You need to know every last bit of that to make any goddamn sense of this musical Hindenburg. This song is Taylor Swift reacting to all this bad press by leaning into her mean girl image. I'm sorry, the old Taylor can't come to the phone right now. Why? Oh. Because she's dead. 
dead. That's right, the old Taylor is dead. The new Taylor Swift is a vengeful killer on a roaring rampage of revenge, and she will exact her vengeance by making unlistenable music. Look what you made me do. Look what you made me do. First thing that needs to be dealt with, this sounds like the Black Eyed Peas. Dirty bit. And, and not one of the middling ones either, one of the really bad ones. Oh, look what you made me do. The world moves on another day, another drama, drama. No, no drama. No, 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 no drama, so don't. Now, to be clear, this would have been a bad idea at any time. But in 2017, music hasn't sounded like this this decade. Maybe if she'd released it back in 2009, this would make sense. She'd be another Kesha or Miley. But it's 2017. This is what Kesha sounds like now. No more monsters, I can breathe again. This is what Miley sounds like now. Feels like I just woke up. That era of music is over. It's done. We tried it. It didn't work. We're moving on. And the important thing is that not only was the Will I Am sound annoying and vapid, it was musically incoherent. He'd just throw random sounds together that wouldn't fit at all. And Taylor's somehow even worse at that. I don't trust nobody and nobody trusts me. The song's really starting to build up ahead of steam. Sorry, the old Taylor can't come to the phone right now. She's dropped the bomb about how the old Taylor is dead! <laughs> Look what you made me do. 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 If Michael Jackson had written music like this, this is how Thriller would have sounded. For no mere mortal can resist. To be fair, I suppose Taylor was always kind of out of step with the times. Back when the Black Eyed Peas were huge, Taylor was corny and wholesome. But that was different. Drawing on the traditions of country music is classic and timeless. Drawing on Will I Am Electro Clash is dated and unlistenable. Trying to drag us back to the Will I Am era of music is inexcusable. And the scary part is, she has enough clout as a trendsetter that she could actually do it. She could actually take us back to 2009. Hell to the no. Hell to the two, to the the, to the no. I am not going back there, man. I can't go back. I can't go back. But the sound is not the only problem. It might not even be the main problem. Let's talk about New Taylor. Look what you made me do. Look what you made me do. Look what you made me do is what wife beaters say to their victims. So she knows she's the bad guy now. It's deliberate. She's being evil on purpose. I, I don't know if she is in real life or not. Maybe it is all a smear job like she says. Or maybe it's all true. But even if in real life she is the bad guy, that doesn't mean she can play the bad guy. But I got smarter, I got harder in the nick of time. On what evidence? What about this is smarter and harder? It sounds a lot dumber. I got a list of names and yours is in red underlined. I check it once, then I check it twice. Oh! And then I humiliate myself. Now Taylor Swift has written plenty of angry songs in the past. She's famous for it, but she also always approached it from the moral high ground. They were always about how hurt she was by your insults or your snobby douchebag taste in music or whatever. Take that away from her, she doesn't seem to know what she's doing. I mean, look at this. Ooh, I'm bad now. Look, this is all I see. I'm sorry, the old Taylor can't come to the phone right now. Cause she's dead. Oh, look what you made me do. Look what you made me do. I don't trust nobody and nobody trusts me. Like, Taylor has to write this song about herself because she can't make it about Kim because she has absolutely no ammo. The role you made me play the fool. Like, I think she's trying to insinuate that Kim lied or did something, but all I hear is You did a thing, a real bad thing, some kind of thing. I'm not going to explain, but trust me, it was bad, so I decided to turn evil. But here's the thing, she didn't decide to turn evil. She's not changing her image. Her image got changed for her. She blundered into it. 
This isn't an anti-hero transformation. It's just a last-ditch attempt at spin from a woman who has badly lost control of the narrative. It's like watching someone wipe out face first and then announce, Well, I meant to do that. By laughing at my face planning, you fell right into my trap. Please. Here, I came up with a new intro for this song. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Taylor Swift in an act of desperation. Hell, it's not even a particularly shocking change. Ooh, it's the new Taylor. The old Taylor is dead. I, I wasn't even really surprised by this song. It's not like it came out of nowhere. Just look at her last album. Shake It Off already showed that she was thin-skinned. Blank Space showed that she was able to play into her own negative image. And Bad Blood showed that she was willing to make music that sounded like dog shit. So what's new here? I'm sorry. The old Taylor can't come to the phone right now. Why? Oh, because she's made an entirely logical progression into her current incarnation. And judging by all the things she's said so far, this song is not even about Kim or Kanye. It's about the way she's treated by the media in general. And all the versions of Taylor that they've made up. Which is quite probably the least interesting direction she could have taken this. Look, I'm not against Taylor Swift as a person. I think she probably does get too much stick. Even now, there are rumors spreading like, Oh, she's deliberately dropping her album on the anniversary of Kanye's mom's death. It, it's such a stretch, but people want her to be that evil. And I, I just feel the same way like when I see made-up stories about Donald Trump. Like, were the things we actually know somehow not bad enough? We have to make up shit now? Come on! So yeah, I kinda might be on her side on this one. But that doesn't mean I want her to sing about it. At some point, your image has to be about something besides itself. This exact problem caused career low points for Lady Gaga, and for Eminem, and even for Michael Jackson. I mean, it's okay that Taylor Swift isn't the pop singer for the every girl anymore, but she has to find a way to get out of her own ass! I'll be the actress starring in her bad dreams. Ooh, is this the real Taylor or the Taylor made up by the media? It's one of the many personas she has played over the years. It's an act. She's an actress. One, no she's not. He was like, look outside your door. Oh. <laughs> and, but you know, I look outside my door and my boyfriend's nowhere to be found. Two, who cares? This whole thing has the stink of a TV show that's been on too long. Full of in-jokes and meta-references and the plot doesn't make any goddamn sense anymore. Bottom line, this isn't an act of revenge against her enemies, it's an act of charity. Somewhere Kim and Kanye, in between trying to put out the fire whatever jackass thing Kanye's done now, are laughing their asses off. And Katy Perry, who seems to shrink and get lamer with every single, and released her own Taylor diss track that Taylor probably didn't even notice, can at least take comfort in the fact that at least she didn't release this. But of course I'm only saying that because that's what the Todd in the Shadows persona I put on would say. Is it real or not real? Who's the actual Todd when he comes out of the shadows? Does he really hate this song or is it just an act? Yeah, no, we're not doing that. It is the real me, the shadow thing is just a dumb gimmick, and yes, I do in fact actually hate this song. I mean, duh, I, I have ears. What's your just me do look what you just made me do. Shut up!